Hello there, I'm Steve Pavlina, and this video is about how to create more clarity in your life. One consequence of all the changes happening in the world is that it's become increasingly difficult for some people to find a sense of stability and confidence in their futures. Just when you think you've found some stability, you may discover that it's not as secure and stable as you once thought, and that that stability is now potentially being threatened. You may be surprised to learn that you can actually feel very clear and confident and secure even while navigating these waves of change and disruption. So let's explore how you can thrive in these challenging times and still create abundant happiness for yourself. Take a moment and reflect on your own life. How is uncertainty about the future honestly affecting you? How do you feel about the direction your life is going? In which areas of your of your life are you experiencing confusion or worry? What parts of life do you just not want to deal with right now? And especially where do you experience ambivalence? Ambivalence is when you're not sure what to do or which way to go. I spent years in that state during my first marriage. In many ways, our relationship was good, but deep down, I really suspected that it wasn't the kind of partnership I wanted to keep investing in. I kept feeling that eventually, it would all come to an end, but I didn't want to deal with that or cause anyone hurt, of course. So I stayed stuck there for a very long time. I was in that relationship for 15 years. In fact, when I shared on my blog that uh, my ex-wife and I were separating in October 2009, I received more negative backlash than I ever had for any other post before. The vitriol was just so over the top. It was insane. In fact, Aaron and I would look at it together and ask ourselves, what the hell is wrong with these people? But for us inside the relationship, it was more about just accepting the writing on the wall. After we separated, we each took our lives in different directions, and I think that was very healthy for both of us. I remember a friend at the time told me, you completed your marriage. And I thought that was a beautiful way of thinking about it, completing your marriage. How did I get unstuck back then? I didn't do it on my own. Other people actually helped me see the truth more clearly. I was way too focused on what was happening inside the relationship, and the solution was that I had to stretch my mind to start investigating the possibilities outside of it. And a few months later, I met Rochelle, and we embarked upon such an adventurous and loving relationship together. We've been together for more than 13 years now, and there's a powerful difference because in this relationship, I'm not confused and I'm not ambivalent. And I have to say that life is so much better when you get to experience really strong clarity. I had a similar experience with my previous business. In the 1990s and early 2000s, I was a computer game developer. I ran a small indie development studio, and I used to host roundtables for indie game developers at the Game Developers Conference a couple of years. I also ran a popular online forum for indie developers. And even though from an external perspective, things were going pretty well. I felt that same kind of confusion and uncertainty and ambivalence. Like, do I really want to keep making entertainment software for the rest of my life? Even though one of my games won several awards, something about that career path didn't feel quite purposeful enough for me. It was good for a while, for about 10 years or so, but then I started feeling that it was time for a change in direction. The way I experienced this on the inside was like I was internally fighting myself. I had a really hard time marshalling all my inner resources to go in the same direction. I found it hard to commit and follow through on certain projects consistently. It was like I needed a ton of time pressure or excess financial pressure to get things moving forward. It always felt like I was holding back and that I couldn't really tap into my very best creative flow. But then when I started my personal development blog in 2004 at stevepellina.com and decided to move on from game development, it was the opposite again. I experienced just so much flow and progress and I was super motivated. Now I've been on this path for more than 18 and a half years and I still wanna keep going with it. Was it always perfect? No, but it's been really, really good. I feel like I have so much more freedom and flexibility on this path but it doesn't feel overwhelming or confusing. It's actually just exciting and stimulating and fun. When I got past that ambivalence, there was this feeling that life had my back 
I seemed to become luckier. Positive synchronicities would just start flowing into my life in the areas where I felt a strong sense of inner flow and alignment, and I was no longer conflicted. For instance, I got a book deal with Hay House in 2008, and they came to me and offered it. I never had a solicited book deal from a publisher. I never received any rejection letters then. I had the book deal before I even wrote a single chapter of the book. In fact, that same book just came out in Simplified Chinese last year. That kind of cooperative flow with life just didn't seem to happen when I was stuck in ambivalence and confusion, but it really opened up when I got myself to a place of much greater clarity. This level of flow also encouraged me to push things further. And in 2010, I uncopyrighted my blog posts and donated them to the public domain. And I've been doing that ever since. So I took most of the content I created and started giving it away for free so people could freely translate it and republish it and reshare it however they wanted. In fact, if you search on my name on Amazon, you'll see that I'm credited as the author or co-author of hundreds of books and audiobooks in a variety of languages. I don't get any money from those because other people have used my work to create those products and I'm cool with that. That kind of flowing and trusting relationship with life can show up big time when you finally step out of confusion and step into a new mode of clarity regarding how you wanna live and what kind of experiences you wanna have. Have you ever experienced something like that where you step out of confusion and create a newfound sense of certainty and flow, at least for a while, and it seems like life reaches out to match you at that level of being? It's like life says, ah, you got it. Here's a bunch of bonus gifts. <laughs> and then you feel like you can afford to be generous because life is constantly refilling your cup. You don't really have to worry so much about lack or scarcity as long as you can maintain that trusting relationship with life. If you're stuck in ambivalence or confusion or anxiety right now, I get it. I know, it sucks. It probably feels like there's some kind of resistance pushing against you as opposed to a pleasing energy that's driving you forward and helping you advance with greater ease and flow. But I can also tell you that there's hope. You can progress beyond that state. It's not easy though, and you may need some help from other people to do it. Recognize that not everyone is stuck. I'm not feeling stuck right now. I feel like I've been in a beautiful flow state for a long time. Not necessarily in every single area of life, but definitely in my career path, my finances, and happy relationships. And it's very rewarding to use essentially the same approach that worked in those areas and keep reapplying it to other areas where there might be some lingering stuckness or confusion. So the beauty here is that once you figure out how to create clarity in one area of life, you can replicate the process. Why is clarity so important? Clarity is like a compass that cuts through the chaos and confusion, providing you with a path forward. When you develop a clear understanding of your values and desires, navigating challenges and making choices that feel aligned and authentic to you becomes a whole lot easier. When you create clarity, and it really is something you create, you're better able to see the big picture and weigh your options intelligently. You get the ability to make clear, crisp, crisp decisions without waffling or second-guessing yourself so much. Clarity also acts like a lens that allows you to focus your energy and attention on what truly matters, so you don't get sucked into endless distractions. When you know what you want and why, it becomes easier to stay focused and committed to your pursuits. Creating a strong sense of clarity often requires deep introspection and self-examination. Through this process, you gain a better understanding of what really drives and motivates you, and that can unlock a tremendous amount of creative flow. In your career, clarity helps you identify paths that resonate with your skills, interests, and values. When you work in a field you genuinely care about, you're more likely to be motivated, engaged, and successful. A clear vision of your professional goals also makes it easier to identify opportunities for growth and development, which sets you on a path to keep upgrading your skills even more. One of my goals a while back was to create a library of very unique and empowering self-development courses. I created the first one called Deep Abundance Integration in 2018, and now I have five major courses done, and I'm working on my sixth. And a lot of people have, have uh, benefited from them. Getting really clear about what I wanted to do professionally made that all possible. When I was less certain about the path forward, no courses got created. In your relationships, 
Clarity allows you to communicate your needs, desires, and boundaries more effectively. This leads to stronger, healthier connections with those around you, as well as a greater sense of understanding and support. When you're clear about what you want and need from your relationships, you can foster deeper emotional connections and cultivate partnerships that are mutually fulfilling. And it's much easier to finally release relationships that just aren't what you're really craving. When you have clarity here, you can finally let go of those partial matches and stop settling for less than what you really want. And that opens the door for much better matches to flow into your life. Otherwise, if you do the opposite, you repel those positive true matches. In your personal life, clarity helps you prioritize your time and energy, enabling you to engage in activities and experiences that align with your values and passions. This can lead to a greater sense of happiness, satisfaction, and overall well-being. Even your hobbies can feel very inspiring for you. So clarity is a really powerful force that can transform your life deeply and profoundly. Clarity makes it possible to create a life that truly resonates with your strong self, the part of you that wants to feel powerful, awake and alive and fully engaged with life. And this part doesn't want to settle for less than that. One powerful way to gain clarity is through the truth and love exercise. This technique involves asking yourself two simple questions. What is true and what is loving? By honestly answering these questions and exploring the intersection of truth and love, you can gain insights into your desires, values, and priorities. For example, if you're in a relationship now, ask yourself, what is true about this relationship? And what would be the most loving action for us both? When I did this during my first marriage, it helped me realize that my truth was that the relationship wasn't what I wanted long-term and that the most loving action was to let go allowing both of us to pursue our own independent paths going forward. The path of greater long-term freedom was for us to separate. If you're not free, you're trapping other people too. Can you see that? Another important step is to realize that you must ultimately reject ambivalence and confusion in order to move forward. Accept that you'll need to release those situations and move on sooner or later. Admit to yourself that ambivalence and confusion just aren't sufficient, and you shouldn't settle for them. You can visit that type of energy, but you can't let yourself stay there indefinitely. So start off by accepting the truth of that, that staying stuck in that kind of resistance is just no way to live long term. Then go into exploration mode. Realize that if you aren't experiencing strong clarity, flow, and happiness right where you are, then your answers must be elsewhere. So you'll need to head back into the possibility space to try something new. What I primarily suggest you focus on here is creating more freedom for yourself. Start dropping, releasing, and ejecting from your life whatever is creating stuckness for you, even if it seems like you're going to have to take a step down in quality of life in some areas. There is no real quality of life without freedom anyway. So don't build yourself a gilded cage and pretend that you're free inside of it. Now I can pretty much guarantee that some part of you will object to this, possibly strongly. It will say that you can't do that or you can't afford to do that. Don't allow that voice to take over your thinking though. It's only one voice among the many multi multitudes of perspectives within you. If you let that voice freeze your thinking, you won't be able to move past it. And you need to move past it in order to access your best rational thinking. Because that voice that says you can't be free is not rational. Of course you can be free. It's important to grasp that when you're in a place of stuckness, it's not just going to miraculously fix itself. And you don't need to spend years digging yourself out of it. If you shifted your mindset today, you could be experiencing a very different reality within a week or less. In an article I wrote some years ago called The Evil Exit, I shared how sometimes the only way out of a seemingly impossible situation is to take the route that might initially appear to be deeply selfish or even downright wrong. But in reality, it may be the only way to move forward and find clarity, at least for you. Accepting that your desires matter and that they're worth pursuing is crucial 
And you don't need anyone's permission to pursue them. And you don't need to justify them to anyone. It's really important to stop downplaying the importance of your desires. You may be worried that people will guilt you about taking the selfish path. Let me reassure you that much of the time, that will happen, that will come true. Some people will indeed judge you for getting free and figuring out how to do what makes you happy, or at least trying. Let them, and then just smile at them. In fact, one of my favorite ways to respond to that kind of criticism is to reply with a smiley face emoji. I consider it the smile of freedom. By the way, a while back, I actually took an online BDSM test, and it came back saying that I'm apparently 17% sadist. So not much, just a little bit. And I'll tell you, that 17% really comes in handy sometimes. If you really want to live a life of clarity and freedom and abundance, then I highly recommend that you develop a little bit of sadism in your personality, because sometimes you'll need that part of you to defend your ability to live a life that makes you happy. Or maybe you could just live in New York City for a while and that should get you there too. When you feel free and clear and happy, you're in a much better place to be able to contribute positively to the world as well. You won't need to tear other people down. You'll have excess capacity for creativity and for service. You're really not doing the world much good by staying trapped. If you need someone's permission to pursue what makes you happy and what creates greater freedom for you, you can have my permission. Not that you need it, but it's there if you want it, okay? <laughs> Another powerful method for gaining clarity is the 30-day trial. This involves committing to a new habit, activity, or mindset for 30 days in a row to see how it affects your life. By diving into new experiences, you can learn more about yourself and discover what resonates with you. I've done tons of 30-day trials just to see what would happen if I changed up some aspect of my life for a month. I like to think of myself as a perpetual explorer. In fact, that's how I often frame my career path. What I like about this framing is that an explorer can create clarity, such as by deciding what to explore next, but a genuine explorer also needs freedom and flexibility to keep exploring, so they'll re resist getting trapped in quicksand. So that's a nice way to balance freedom and commitment. And lastly here, don't, es under don't underestimate the power of seeking support from like-minded individuals or communities. Surrounding yourself with people who share your values and aspirations can offer fresh perspectives, guidance, and encouragement, making it easier for you to gain clarity and pursue your goals. When I wanna make a big change in life, I'll often seek out and get involved in a new community of some type, online or offline, doesn't matter. And then my ongoing engagement in that community helps me move forward in that direction. I've actually done that dozens of times because we really are strongly influenced by our social circles. When my current social circle feels like it's no longer working for me, I change it up. The friends who are able to stick with me long-term are the ones who give me room to keep reinventing myself over and over. And they don't get so clingy with how I've been in the past. They give me space to explore. The key idea here is that clarity is something you create by conscious choice and by directing your will. The first place to direct your will is towards greater freedom. And that includes leaving situations that feel stuck. Do that with whatever amount of will you can currently muster. The next place to direct your will is into exploration. And through lots of exploration, you can eventually discover what is enticing enough for you to commit to long-term. Not in a way that makes you feel trapped, but in a way that makes you feel right at home, right where you are. So consider the reason to get free is so that you can explore freely and that freedom to explore as even other people may repeatedly and harshly judge you for it is so crucial to finding your place in the world. I can turn the page here and tell you that if you do this long enough, some of those same critics may eventually come around and want what you have and your attitude can be like, hey, you can keep wallowing in misery and lashing out at me because my presence in your reality keeps reminding you of how painfully stuck you are, or you could chill out a bit and work on becoming free and flexible enough to explore what really makes you happy. Some of those people may even ask you to help them. And if they do, I say encourage them to get themselves free first, and then they can 
work on gaining clarity about their desires through exploration. I hope you found some helpful insights here, and please let me know what you thought of this video. I wish you well.